Yeah, so that's interesting. So shortly after the experience economy came out, um, it was you know it was like within two or three years, we began noticing that how much when you talk about experience, how much people bring up authenticity. You know, for me, I became a visiting professor at the University of Amsterdam, and I spent a lot of time in the Netherlands. And, and it seemed like every session I did, you know, that, the, the first question uh, would start with the same two words. It was always, you Americans. And <laughs> it was more of an accusation than a question. Right? They'd say, you Americans, you like your fantasy experiences, your, your fake experiences, your Disney experiences. You know, we Dutch, we like real authentic experiences. And this happened so much, I eventually developed a, a practice response to it where I said, well, first understand that all experiences are authentic to you, right? As long as you're an authentic human being in some way, if you view them as authentic, they're authentic uh, to you. Uh, and, uh, and, and so in that sense, there's no such thing as a, as a fake experience. Um, but also that this is, this is uh, I always say, this is an amazing question coming from a country like the Netherlands, which is just as manufactured as Disneyland is. Right? You know, and they, and they sort of go like this and then they go and they realize I'm right. Right. Because because, you know, half of the country has been reclaimed from the sea. It wasn't actually any land at all. It was water. They there isn't it seemed like square meter in the entire place that hasn't moved, been moved, modified or manicured to look as if it's always been there. It's the only place where I've ever gone for a walk in the woods and all the trees are lined up in rows. Right. That's that's authentic to them. Right. So, uh, so, but, but we realized then that it, um, uh, it really is an issue. And, and eventually what we realized is that authenticity was what we call the new consumer sensibility of the experience economy. That, that, in other words, it was the primary buying criterion by which people choose what to buy and who to buy from. And increasingly, they didn't want the, the fake from the phony. They wanted the real from the genuine. So to, uh, to really understand that, and that was the, the second book that Jim Gilmore and I wrote together, came out in 2007, um, you know, that I always like to say that, that we, had, we read all of these philosophy books on authenticity, so you don't have to, right? So we read Lionel Trilling, Sincerity, Authenticity. We read Charles uh, Taylor. We read Jean-Jacques uh, Rousseau, and, and uh, we read Heidegger. Well, nobody can read Heidegger, but <laughs> we we. We read it as well as we could to, to, to synthesize what they were doing. And uh, Trilling had one, one particular impact, if I remember it right, which is that uh, he was the one who pointed to um, Shakespeare's play Hamlet, which was perhaps the most existential of, of all plays, you know, to be or not to be. Uh, and there's this, uh, there's this, if I remember right, act two, scene three, uh, but there's this point at which um, um, Laertes is going off to France and his father Polonius is giving him his long series of advice as, as, they're, as they're starting the trip. And, uh, you know, and it's filled with platitude after platitude and cliche after cliche until the very end, Polonius, or rather Shakespeare through Polonius, says something very profound, which is this above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as night to day, thou canst not then be false to any man. And, uh, and we realized was that those two, those three lines of the immortal barb contain the, the two key standards of authenticity. The number one, it's about being true to self, right? That's how we know, uh, we know we're being inauthentic where we're not being true to self. Um, when we do things that are antithetical to who we are, that applies not just to people, but to corporations. When corporations do things that that betray their heritage or their principles, their values, their meaningful purpose, and so forth, they're not being true to self. Uh, and then that last line about not being false to any man is not about the, the self to which you must be true. It's about how you represent that self in truth, or represent that self to others, right? So true to self is self-focused. Um, and this is, is other focus where it's a matter of, are you what you say you are, right? Is your offering what it says it is? Is your company what it says it is? And so those are the two key standards of what we call the real fake matrix uh, um, uh, in the book. And, uh, and so those axes were inspired by thinking about that in, in, in Lionel Trilling, where you, you talk about that difference between sincerity and, and authenticity.